everyone. My name's David Carmichael, and for my final script, my uh, my play is called Life is Music, and the way I came up with it was because I'm really into music, so I thought, you know, maybe I'll make a play about it. And so, for this one, um, technically it's not a play, it's a musical but not your normal musical in the sense of like people are singing and whatnot. This is kind of, it's one of those, uh, I'm, I'm going to say play, it's a musical, I'm about to say play though. It's one of those plays where there's no talking. The only person that will talk is the narrator to describe what's going on or how a character is feeling. But for the most of it, you have to read kind of like their emotions and see how it goes. So, it's it's kind of interesting. It's different. Uh, so here we go. Let's let's get this going. All right. So for scene one, lights turn on. Uh, the narrator of the story starts out by introducing the main character. Uh, his name is Charlie. Uh, I literally picked that name at random, just to go with it. Uh, the narrator talks about Charlie's life and how it's very, like, kind of black and white, not very, like, interesting. Like, he doesn't feel interested in anything. Uh, but then it pans out one day. Charlie's walking in the park in the background of the park, and then there's people playing and stuff going on. And he sees the narrator speaking, saying, you know, Charlie, uh sees the kids playing and they're about his same age but he doesn't really want to play with them because he's not interested in what they're doing they're playing soccer or baseball or something and he's kind of walking around and he just kind of decides right, i'm gonna go home there's nothing here until suddenly he hears a very like vibrant sound that just kind of draws him in and by the way while all this is going on this is like him acting this out. Like I said, there's not talking going on. If the narrator talks, it's just to explain what's happening. But anyways, he's grabbed by like this vibrant sound. <clears throat> Sorry. And he starts to walk towards it and see what it is. And we see that um, there's like an intermission of no one saying anything, the narrator goes quiet, and you just hear this nice, wonderful playing. And you see it's this other guy, some, same age as him, and he's playing the guitar. It's like, oh man, Charlie's really interested in this, and he kind of listens to it. And the guy stops playing and gestures him to come over and like, you know, come, hey, you come over and listen. And so he comes over, he listens, he's playing, it's very nice, very warmth, bright sound. And Charlie really likes it. And, wants to learn how to do it, the narrator, uh, the narrator chimes back in, and he says, the guitar player, his name is Larry, he's a professional guitar player, he's been playing for a long time, and, you know, he asks, doesn't ask Charlie, but he, like, points to the guitar, like, hey, you know, do you want to play, like, this is being acted out, and Charlie shakes his head, and he's like, no, I just want to keep listening, and then, so Larry's like, all right, and then he keeps playing, so there's an intermittent of, like, just him playing, and like there's nothing else going on after a while a few songs go by larry packs up stuff leaves waves goodbye to charlie charlie waves goodbye heads straight home and the first thing he does is gets on the internet and starts looking for a guitar and end of scene one happens break comes scene two charlie somehow you know he arrives to a guitar center dropped off by his mom or dad or something uh, walks in, he's astonished, there's so many guitars, different ones to choose from, he doesn't know which one to choose, um, you hear different people playing different kind of sounds, there's vibrant, there's rock, there's jazz, blues, hip-hop, kind of a mix of everything, and he doesn't know where to even begin. The employee that works there, uh, she sees him and decides to help him out, kind of asks what is he looking for and what... And so he says, you know, he doesn't say it, but like kind of gestures like, I don't know how to play it. Like maybe he picks up a guitar and just like does that or something. And like that kind of shows like, oh, he doesn't know how to play. 
goes around, looks at the guitars, kind of looks around, looks around until one jumps out at him. Like the spotlight zooms in on like this one guitar. And he just knows like that's the one I need to have. And the scene starts to fade out. And then it fades back in to Charlie walking into his house with that guitar. And first thing you notice, he tries to play, and he just can't get the sound like Larry did. And he kind of tries, tries for like a week or two, and just can't get that sound. He gets frustrated, puts the guitar away, goes for a walk, and... He goes for a walk, goes back to the park. Larry happens to be there again, playing again. Kind of goes up to Larry, listens, listens, and then he's like, he stops listening, runs back to his house, grabs his guitar, comes back, showing that he wants to learn how to play like he does. Larry sees that he has a guitar. He's interested, like, oh, that's cool. Like, do you, you know, kind of like shaking his head, like, oh, very cool. Uh, he points to it, like, the guitar is like kind of sound like, do you play? Like again, I say this again, there are no words being spoken unless the narrator is saying something. At this point, the narrator is not saying anything. So it's just kind of like body gestures. So you kind of read it like, oh, like, do you play the guitar? No, you don't. Oh. And so Charlie wants to learn. Larry decides to help him out, tries to teach him. It's like, hey, listen to the world and you'll find the music. And like he strums. So after that, you know, Charlie leaves to go find the music and the scene ends. Final scene is where he's going on a hike. He's listening to all the sounds that the creatures and like animals are making. And those can be represented through instruments. So like say you have like, I don't know, a deer running through the forest. That could be like little bongo or drums or whatever. And you hear the wind coming by and that could be represented with a like trumpet or air instrument or something uh kind of starts to like hear all these different instruments and starts to gather like the life of music in a sense sees thunderclouds coming it's gonna rain heads back home scene changes to him in his bed it's late looking out the window it's raining and the rain is represented with a piano and the piano is playing a very soft, calming music sound. And you can kind of see on his face that he like he gets it and he understands. And it fades to black. Next day, he practices more, getting a little better each time. Finally, he decides to go and show Larry what he's done. And Larry is impressed by what he can play. They play together. And the rest of the play is just them playing the guitar together, guitars, and but like also other instruments are jumping in. So like the jump, the, oh my gosh, the drums jump in, uh, trumpet, and like kind of like this musical, like all comes together and then it all like makes sense. And then play ends and that is the life of music. That is my play. Uh, just to give a fair example, I guess, because I did bring it out of some of the things that, you know, you could hear like, for when Charlie is like trying to learn how to play, he could be like, has no idea what he's doing or doesn't sound right. And then later on, he figures more stuff out. You hear Larry play, and then it's, at the end, it sounds good. Like, Something like that. They can play. Obviously, the actors who would do the skit would have to know how to play an instrument. But yeah, that's my play, and thank you for your time. Great class.